Now, at this point, our prefab is not yet destructible. We want to be able to blow this up. That's the whole point of this, is to make this destructible terrain. Now, we're going to make a first version of it that's not going to be very convincing. It's not going to be like very exciting, but it's going to work. So we are going to create a script. I'm going to right click over here, create a script. Again, normally I'd have this all organized in subfolders, but this will be fine. And I'm going to call this destructible. I'm going to take this script and attach it to my prefab. Great. So now it's there. Of course, the script doesn't do anything yet. So let's get editing. We're going to double click on this and go into our mono develop. Now, uh, for this version of the, uh, the demo, I'm just going to make it so that when we click on it with our mouse, it's going to be destroyed. OK, we'll get to some other implementations of it down the road. We don't need the start or update at all. We're simply going to go void on mouse down. And we're going to say destroy our game object. So if I tap back over here and I hit play, and I, oh, the mouse look is kind of fundy. And I click on this, boom, he goes away. Excellent. You know what I'm going to do, just to make my life a little simpler, is I'm going to bring myself a little closer to the model so I can more easily see what's going on. Great. So click, he destroys himself. Awesome. Now, that is not really destructible geometry, right? So how do you make this thing blow apart? Well, you don't make this thing blow apart inside of Unity. You, Unity doesn't have the potential, doesn't have the ability to destroy a model because it's such a tricky question. How should the model be destroyed? But what we can do is we can replace the model with something else. And that's what we're going to do here. Let's create a new empty. We're going to call this one building block uh, destroyed. Actually, I'll go underscore destroyed. And I'm going to stick a model inside of it. And right now, I'm just going to use one of the prefabs just to sort of demonstrate that it's going to work. So we're going to stick a sphere in there. I'm just going to nest it inside. We're going to make sure that the sphere is, uh, I was going to say totally centered, but that's not it. We're going to have a, a two by two by two sphere. We're going to have it one unit up. And if we put the building block on the ground, good. Oh, zero. Yeah, all right, that looks good. So we have a building block destroyed, and we're going to turn that into a prefab. And then we're going to get rid of this. So obviously, this is not what the building block should look like once it gets exploded. But we're going to replace that soon enough. Let me kill that. Now, we're going to go back to our destructible script. And we're going to make a public game object. We're going to call this debris prefab. Now, when we on mouse down and we destroy ourselves, before we actually go away, we're going to instantiate the debris prefab in our current position and with our current rotation. So we're going to replace ourselves with the destroyed version of ourselves before we actually poof and go away. So again, this will not look right. But when we hit play and I click on the object, oh, it won't do anything. Two things, first of all, you need to check that you actually have a destroyed prefab around to instantiate. If not, we're just going to poof and go away. So that's one thing. So now I'll no longer get the error, and it will once again be able to destroy it. And the second thing, in our prefab, in our destructible script over here, we can assign what our debris prefab should be. And we're going to assign this building block destroyed version, which is going to be this silly sphere placeholder. So we click. And indeed, it replaces it with the sphere. Now, the sphere is not very interesting. The sphere certainly doesn't look like the destroyed version of this cube. Now we're going to look into some slightly fancier Blender stuff.